I'm Micah Halpern, sitting in for the vacation in Tisha Bader, here with the JBS News Update for Monday, August 31st, 2015. Russian fighter pilots and their fighter jets will be arriving in Syria this week. Western diplomats explain that the Russian expeditionary force has already arrived in Syria and set up camp in an Assad-controlled air base. The base is said to be the area surrounding Damascus and will serve, for all intents and purposes, as a Russian forward operating base. In the coming weeks, thousands of Russian military personnel are set to touch down in Syria, including advisors, instructors, logistics personnel, technical personnel, members of the Aerial Protection Division, and the pilots who will operate the aircraft. They will be attacking ISIS. This will change the balance of power on the ground and have a huge, larger impact on the entire region. Here in America, President Barack Obama addressed American Jews on Friday in a special webcast. The president insisted that the agreement negotiated between the world powers and Iran blocks the Islamic Republic from developing nuclear weapons without limiting the United States' options in the case of violations. The president's discussion was broadcast here on JBS. This deal blocks every way, every pathway that Iran might take in order to obtain a nuclear weapon. We're not giving away anything in this deal in terms of our capacity to respond if they chose to cheat. The event was co-sponsored by the Jewish Federations of North America and the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. Obama made a few remarks before responding to questions many submitted by American Jews to the organizers in advance. Though Obama rejected the, quote, heated, unquote, rhetoric surrounding the deal, he challenged the idea that the vitriol has been equal on both sides, laying most of the blame on his detractors. The president denied calling opponents of the deal warmongers and defended Representative Gerald Nadler, Democrat from New York, who recently came out in support of the president's deal. Nadler, he said, for, quote, personal and political integrity stood by Israel and has been attacked in ways that are appalling. You know, I would suggest that uh, in terms of the tone of this debate, uh, everybody um, keep in mind that uh, we're all pro-Israel and we have to make sure that uh, we don't impugn people's motives. In Switzerland, the Swiss ambassador to Iran addressed 500 Swiss pe business people and called on them to run back to Tehran and invest. Ambassador Haas said that Iran was, quote, a pole of stability, unquote, in the Middle East. And now that the sanctions are over, it is the perfect and safe place to invest. He urged those listening to his message to take advantage of a lucrative market that has been closed for years. Haas was not just referring to the oil markets, he was referring to the entire Iranian market. And he was urging the heads of business to invest in Iran. He said, Iran seems still for a lot of people to be bearded elderly gentlemen with turbans. You see them, but you see not a lot of them, especially when you're dealing with business. And then the ambassador dropped a diplomatic bomb. He showed the political cartoon on a huge screen in the room. The cartoon portrayed Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu with two doves on his head, and they were both going to the bathroom. One dove had a U.S. flag, the other had an Iranian flag. The title of the cartoon was Iran Now or Never. The Swiss ambassador then said, what this picture shows is, I think now is really the opportunity to assess the market, unquote. The Swiss foreign ministry apologized and said that no insult was intended. This is an example of the new modus operandi across Europe. European investors are excited about the possibilities that will emerge out of Iran. In Israel, since Friday until today, Monday, a very special guest has been visiting Israel, U.S. Undersecretary of the Treasury, Adam Zubin. He's the Undersecretary in Foreign Assets Control, Terrorism, and Financial Intelligence. He is Obama's sanctions czar. The U.S. Treasury said that Zubin was in Israel to, quote, emphasize the United States' commitment to increasing cooperation with Israel to combat Iran's support for terrorism and other destabilizing activity in the region. And the U.S., of course, wants to know what Israel wants in exchange for the deal. The deal will go through, but what will be part of the package that Israel will get from the United States when it happens? 
The U.S. is in an ongoing fight against ISIS here on U.S. soil. This weekend, Virginia teenager Ali Amin was sentenced by a U.S. District Court to 136 months, that is 11 plus years, in prison for supporting ISIS. The U.S. Justice Department said in a statement on Saturday, Amin, 17 years old and from Manassas, Virginia, had pleaded guilty to conspiring to provide material support to a militant organization which has been designated a foreign terrorist group by the DOJ, said in a statement. And now, a rundown for tonight's broadcast on JBS. For Monday, August 31st, at 8 o'clock, Israeli journalist Ari Shavit asks, Is peace dead? At 9 p.m., Rabbi Mark Golub interviews Esther Waxman, an American Israeli mother whose son Nachshon was kidnapped by Palestinian terrorists and brutally murdered in 1994 on Lachai. I'm Micah Halpern, and this is today's news update from JBS. <laughs>